So this is uh, chapter 9 on sequences of functions and uh, this is a narration after the event as uh, the audio recordings failed on the 24th of November. Anyway, the point of this uh, chapter is to tell you about what happens if you've got sequences of functions defined on a domain and in this case taking real values, though you could be taking values in some uh, other R to the D. So you've got a sequence of functions, f1, f2 and f3, and uh, you want to find out whether they can have some sort of a limit or not. Now it's not the same as the sequence of numbers, but it's still interesting to know to whether or not a given sequence of functions can approximate some other function or not. This can be important when you're trying to solve some differential equation and you want to look at approximate solutions and you want to know how close your uh, approximate solution is to the limit function and a lot of other settings and it's very important uh, later on in more advanced analysis as well. There are quite a lot of different notions of convergence um, but we're going to focus on two of them um, called uniform convergence and pointwise convergence for sequences of functions and to help us, we'll just have a look at uh, reminding ourselves about my notion of absorption that we looked at earlier in the module. You may remember that we had the notion of a set absorbing a sequence in R to the D um, if from some term onwards all terms in the sequence or elements of the sequence were in that set. So the sequence eventually gets stuck inside the set. Now, we had an exercise on a question sheet, and this is a slight variant on it, and uh, it's not very hard. Uh, if you want to check whether a sequence of real numbers converges to an element of the real numbers, well, usually you would use open intervals, but if you use closed intervals instead, then uh, you get an equivalent definition. This is, even though the fact that a particular closed interval absorbs the sequence doesn't force the sequence to be stuck inside the, the corresponding open interval, nevertheless, if you know it works for all of the closed intervals centered on A, then um, it does show that it works for all open intervals centered on A as well. We proved this, in fact, in generality using closed balls and open balls in uh, R to the D. So this is, in fact, a special case of a result we did in an earlier examples class. So that brings us on to the notion of pointwise convergence. And this is of the two notions of convergence for sequences of functions, uh, this is slightly easier than the other one, uh, than uniform convergence. This one is you just look separately at each point x in the domain. And remember that fn is a sequence of functions. Defined on D, taking values in R. So um, then for each x in the domain, you get a sequence corresponding to x of real numbers because they're taking values in R. So if you like, n can vary, x can vary. If you fix a particular x and an n vary, you get a sequence fn of x as n goes from 1 up to infinity. And now you can ask then, does this approach the right limiting value f of x? Does fn of x tend to f of x as n tends to infinity? So you look at x in d, you take a particular x in d, you look at this sequence f1 of x, f2 of x, f3 of x, that's a sequence of real numbers. And you ask, does it converge to f of x?
Now, you might get different answers at different points x. So it might be that at some values of x, this sequence does give you a sequence converted to f of x, and at other values of x, it doesn't. To say that the sequence converted is pointwise to f, the sequence of functions converted pointwise to f, if you actually get that this limit is correct at every point of x. So you have to look for, for all x in d, look at the sequence, doesn't converge to f of x. If that works for every x in d, then you say you've got pointwise convergence of the sequence fn to f. It's not a very strong notion of convergence, in fact, and it's, it doesn't have very good properties. But it is a useful starting point when you want to understand some of the other notions of convergence. Now, uniform convergence is a bit trickier. Um, but before we move on to uniform convergence, and before we look at closed ball and sets of all sequences of functions, um, let's have a look at a particular example illustrating pointwise convergence of a sequence of functions. So let's consider the following functions defined on the real line. So Fn will go from R to R. And which functions are they? Well, we'll just define Fn of x to be x divided by n. So again, remember, n can vary and x can vary. It's almost a function of two variables, but we think of it as a sequence of functions of x. And will be fixing x and letting n vary. So fn of x is going to be x over n. And we're going to have a look and see what these functions look like and what they do. So I'll, I'll leave it to you to check some of the details of this in full. But let's at least have a sketch and see what these functions are doing. So here we are, let's have some axes. And f1 of x is just x, so our first function is just x, the second function is x over 2. And so you can see what these functions are, f n of x is x over n. So you can see we've got a very clear formula for what each of these functions are, and we can sketch them, and you can see we get a sequence of graphs. So here's the first function. That's y equals f1 of x equals x, which we sketched in blue. And now in red, we'll do y equals f2 of x, which is x over 2. And we'll do x over 3, which is f3 of x. Now each of these is, of course, a straight line with a positive gradient. So the gradients get rather small when n is big. But if you look at any one of these, it's a straight line with some fixed positive gradient. And um, it goes, it heads off to minus infinity when you go left. It heads off to plus infinity when you go right. So each of these functions is unbounded. But now, if you fix a particular point x and look at the look at the values taken by these functions, here, let me show them on the y-axis. Then, of course. The first value, and uh, it looks like I'm not completely to scale here, uh, but that can happen. Um, so if 1 of x is x, if 2 of x is x over 2, if 3 of x is x over 3, and as you can see, if n of x is tending down to 0 as n tends to infinity, well, tending to 0 as n tends to infinity, 
So the functions f in are converging to the function f pointwise where f is a constant function 0. That's f of x is 0 for all x. which shows you that uh, a sequence of unbounded functions can converge pointwise to a bounded function. And that'll do for today.